Now fairway woods are the most difficult to hit in many cases, three wood in particular is we're looking for forgiveness and that's why it's a real important list for me this that most forgiving fairway woods of 2021. I'm going to start off with this one. Well, that's the first thing about a forgiving fairway. You want it to sort of, for me anyway, you want it to be a high launching fairway. This is a three wood. In my opinion, what we're maybe looking for is anything between a three, four and five wood in this category as being the most forgiving, which is what we're looking at today. But what's really interesting about this product, and I better reveal what it is, actually number five is the Sim Max 2 from TaylorMade. First of all, it looks really good, sits really nice at a dress. I'm a fan of the, the way this looks from above, really do. And I think it looks better underneath than what the driver did in this range, a bit much more solid build. It's 15 degrees, a standard uh, sort of loft, but again, quite an elongated shape. So that means they've got that CG right at the back. And you've seen from that ball fight there, picking up off a tight lie on this Lynx turf, still absolutely powers it up into the air. And I think that's something we really struggle with as average golfers is the way we launch a three wood, particularly off the deck so for me coming at number five and there are reasons why i'll get it hasn't finished uh, higher up and uh, that'll sort of come to light when i announce the others one of the things about this is a price point it's in and around this sort of 250 mark there's a few in and around that figure as well but for me number five would be the sim max 2 and pretty much not a lot that you can pick fault with that one Oh, it's a solid ball, right at the bunker line, which is where we were set up to aim. Ball flight really good, interestingly enough, and like I said through the testing, we've got a mix of majority of three woods, this happens to be a five, it's the Mizuno STZ range. I think with Mizuno, they've done an incredible job in recent years, particularly the last two years, I think, in terms of the releases of both drivers and fairway woods. What I like about this STZ range is, first of all, let's go to that thing about looks. It looks really good. That's, that's fine. But performance wise, although this is a five wood, standard loft 18 degrees, I had to check that one. So three degrees weaker than the tailor made uh, that we've just hit. It's got a really powerful and strong ball flight, but still launches it incredibly well. So I've been sort of, like I said, I've had this in the bag. And I've had it in the bag as kind of like a, something I'm happy to play off the tee and off the fairway, but not necessarily as a typical five wood, which I would think is something that you can get a lot sort of higher, uh, softer landing, blah, blah, blah. This is something that's got a real powerful, strong ball fight, but it's easy to use. And I think, again, we as average golfers, we need that forgiveness. That's why this category is such an important one. It's priced okay but it's only in the mix with the rest of them that's the only criticism i have of mizuno products in terms of their woods at this point i still think they should be at a price point that's appealing to more in terms of dragging people in at a slightly lower point than it is right now it's still as i recall in around that 350 really good product as you'd expect from mizuno really well built as you've seen launches the ball incredibly well and that's why it's my number four in my most forgiving fairways of 2021 Ah, uh, that one just slid a little bit off to the right hand side, but another real interesting product comes in at number three. And I don't think you can go wrong with any of this product line, to be honest with you. It's from Callaway. And it's their Epic range, their Epic Max in particular, this three wood. And again, there's sort of three variations within this, uh, within this Epic Max, within this Epic range this year, same as with the drivers. If I'm honest with you, Tough to split, I think, um, but for me, for ultimate forgiveness, which is what this category is about, is obviously the Max product. And again, you'll see weight right at the back, which again, we're expected to see. Really sort of shallow crown, very different this one. Um, again, suits my eye, but not everybody's very much elongated. And I think the negative would be perhaps it seems to have more offset than others in this category. When I say a negative, a negative for me personally, but then to the mass market, who I believe have fade the ball, and maybe it's a more interesting choice. 
But it's all about forgiveness, this category, and I don't think you can go wrong, like I said, with the Max lineup. It's been really, really, even that wasn't the best of swings, did far better than it should have done, which is a typical example of how good these are. And I think in terms of visuals, the Epic Max or the Epic range in general, quality build, shallow face, which again, you'll see here is not only that was teed up a little bit, taking off a tight lie for me, visually gives me a great deal of confidence. So I'm going to pick it up nice and easy and still get that high launching ball flight. So that's us into top two, where it gets really interesting. Ah, this club is sort of Mr. Reliable in terms of forgiveness. Leave that a tad to the right, but I've got to say, when you talk about ping, full stop for me, probably the most forgiving range of clubs out there. They, they just don't seem to get that bit wrong at all. It is, of course, a G425. It's their max range. Again, same old repeated message that I've had so far, which is weight right at the very back. But like I said, ping just do this really well. I'm not too sure just... You always think with golf club technology, surely everything is the same. I don't think it is. And like I said, how do they seem to get this bit right every time? Their MOI is always recorded. Data-wise, it's been incredibly high, both in this and the driver into the fairway woods. And I think they've got really forgiving irons as well. But what they do really well with this, again, for me on a personal level, that matte finish is really good. Sits really shallow at address. Slightly elongated crown. The shallow address bit for me is when you're on a fairway and I don't know why and again tell me in the comments down below am I just the only person that does this but if I've got a sort of raised more bulky head sitting on a tight lie it defies logic in terms of me being able to get that ball up and airborne and like I said that might just be down to me personally but sits really shallow and again as you can see from this picks the ball up really good high launching ball as you've just seen as well off the tee shot I've just played ticks every single box except for one and the only reason i put it in number two and not the top spot is down to the price point it's probably the most expensive fairway wood within this top five i kind of understand to a degree because it's a quality made product but like i said you'd have to mark it down just slightly on that price point so that just leaves us with one more to go so once again a real interesting category for me the most forgiving fairway woods it's something that a lot of golfers, average golfers struggle with, like I mentioned, particularly trying to play these things off the fairway. I do think, again, five woods, four woods should be more in uh, average golfers bags. But for me, what is your kind of setup right now? And out of this top five or something I've failed to mention, what would you put in the bag as your most forgiving, most playable fairway wood for average golfers? Oh, just said it's gonna have to be a Sunday best to reach. It's had a good old go. Get up. Oh, yes, I'm so pleased with that. We've played at 2.05 into the wind uh, for our final shot of the day and my number one most forgiving fairway wood. Interestingly enough, in terms of the 2.05 into the wind, it's a five wood I've just played. My number one product for this year in terms of the fairway woods comes from PXG. Now, there's a number of reasons why this sticks in at number one. Yes, the performance wise, and I've already said throughout this whole sort of top five is that first of all, I think a five and four are the fairway woods that we should be carrying. This has been my go to club, if you like, for the past year. I had a G4 25 seven wood in the bag and five wood. I've had this in, in and out. We've tried the Mizuno. But for me, this is such a great all round club in the sense that. You get that ball flight that we've just hit there off of the tee into a bit of breeze. That's not floating, that's still piercing through the wind, but incredibly high launching ball. They just, they've done this incredibly well in making it a very easy to use club. It's lofted at 18 degrees. But again, much like the five wood we produced with the uh, Mizuno, still got a very piercing and penetrating ball flight. But we're talking about how forgiving it is, and that's the key for me. Launch is really high, very easy to pick up off a tight lie that you can see again from a shot from the fairway. Play it from the tee, just look, plays good. The looks element for me, and don't forget this is my top five, I really like what they've done from the top side. I like the fact that it's a bit different from the norm. I like the matte finish anyway, 
The fact that it's a bit different mightn't appeal to everybody, so I understand why that might make your top five, because that's the real sort of differing look that we've seen from any of the others and anything that we've seen before in terms of this category or in terms of fairway and drivers. But the reason that it goes from perhaps number one and not number five, and why it differs from kind of like the Mizuno, which again was a five wood, easy to launch, really powerful, all the same things that I've said. This is priced at 220. And we never thought we'd be looking at a PXG product appearing on the top of a charts based on its price point. But in the same way as we looked at the most forgiving irons in a recent video, and it sort of falls down because it's still priced extremely high. At 220, it is such a good price point for an average guy, don't get me wrong, it's still a few quid to pay, but if you compare it to the other five, it gives you that extra tick in the box so it meets it on price, the quality of build, the quality of performance, easy to launch, the kind of adjustability again, if you don't want to play this five wood at 18 degrees, you can make it stronger or weaker. It literally does everything you want it to do. And that one added thing that they do incredibly well, which is sound and feel. And that is again, a major, major key for me on a personal level. It's a kind of softer, more muted sound, but again, fires off the face and really feels like that ball is going out there. So that's my top five. But like I said, I've given you some very personal reasons as to why that order has been put together. That might not necessarily be yours. So nobody get offended. Stick your list down below in what you think, like I said, is either your top five or your number one. Most forgiving fairway wood at 2021. Right, that's me done. Don't forget, if you like what you see, all these opinions come from an average golfer, very much like yourself. So please consider subscribing and supporting the channel in that way. Hit that like button for this video and get those comments in down below. Another one final mention is in recent weeks, we've done a new series, which is called Testing the Tips, which has been me trying out other YouTubers, professional YouTubers, uh, golf tips. And that's proved to be really successful. So there's a link up below uh, right now link up below that doesn't make any sense a link there for you to try those tip series videos and uh, see what you think of them as well right that's me done enough waffling on and i will see you all very soon wallacey thanks for having us